Dr. Bishop Luther Blackwell. There is none like you. No one else touch my heart like you do. I eternity I find there is none. Come on, lift your hands and sing it to the Lord. There is none like you, yes. There is none like you. Savior Jesus Christ. I'm happy to be here today. And I purpose that uh, normally I'm at the other church on Easter and this church on Palm Sunday, but I wanted to reverse that because you were birthed out of my loins. You are my children and it is my last Easter as senior pastor. Yes. The next Easter, if you can count, it, it will be in 2023. Yes. My exit strategy as senior pastor, not that I'm moving out, I'm moving up, yes. is January 1, yes. 2023. I have found, and now the other church is worse than this one, in terms of if anybody wants to get anything over and done quickly, they always say, Bishop said. And I had to tell my office, and always have to keep them in mind, that I don't need anybody to tell you what Bishop said. Bishop can say it himself. And so wherever you heard that I was leaving today, one of my dear, dear, dear members met me at the step with tears in her eyes. I said, what's the matter with you? Oh, did you your last... Shut up! <laughs> Not my last Sunday my last Easter, and this is not a time of sadness, it's a time of celebration. Amen. And I want to thank you for indulging me in the change of schedule. Change is hard, and we always lose people when we make the change. 
eight o'clock folk want to be here at eight o'clock and they don't want to wait until nine an hour later. 10.30 people, the reason they come at 10.30 because they want to sleep in and, and some sleep past sleep in uh, and come in 11.30 and 12. And so this is always a difficult thing to pull off here because of the two mindsets that go on here. So thank you for making your adjustment. Making, if, if you have a problem with change, you're going to have a problem the rest of your life. Amen, amen, for real, for real. I, I'm in the change of my life making decisions that I'd never even thought about five, ten years ago. I mean, changes I'm making decisions about now, today, for my future, for my family, and uh, for my churches. And Jesus told the disciples, I must go away. This is not something I want to do. I must. I have to. In order to fulfill purpose, and in order to fulfill the will of God for the next generations, I must go away. I have to. So these changes that are going on here at Mega and San Fran, it's a must. Uh, changes I'm making in my family, it's not because I want to. I can continue doing what I'm doing until I'm taken. But after I'm taken, then what? They are left with what are I, whatever I have left. So thank you for making the change. Is Daisy here today? Daisy. Okay. Is she here? Not Stacy, Daisy. Daisy, Daisy Little. Okay. Uh, I wanted to see her today. There's some, some of you guys faces I look for when I, I come. And uh, love you. Thank you, all my sons, for what they shared. They are all special, and I'm proud of all. I'm proud of this house. Proud of this church. Proud of every one of you, proud of those saints who have traveled week after week, and those of you who have been here for years, 30 Easter's, 25 Easter's. I'm proud of Wanda. That was a tremendous speech she gave. I want to tell you what Wanda said when I wasn't here. She told me to get my something back to church. <laughs> I don't know if that was the coat that was tied. I don't know what that was. But she said, get back here. Everybody's not as saved as some of you. We all have our moments, I guess, that salvation slips. But I, I, I love real people. People who are not trying to be holy. They're trying to grow in holiness, you know? And it's a growing process. For everything that was done here today, I appreciate the choir. Oh, my Lord. That was worth getting out of bed for. It is well with your soul. And I thought about being well with your soul. You have to maintain wellness of soul. Because the enemy doesn't want you to sing that song. He does not want that to be your testimony. He's after your mental and spiritual and emotional health, your soul realm. And to sing it as well is one thing, but maintain the wellness of soul, the wellness of life. Well, there's so much I could say today, but we started early so we could get out earlier. I don't know if that will happen. And really, I don't care. I'm going to finish this message. It's a phenomenal word. I don't know if I can preach it, but it's phenomenal. I'm looking at it. And I want you to look at it with me from Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. If you didn't bring your Bibles, as we're accustomed not to do anymore, uh, it's on our phone, it's on our tablets, it's, we don't carry the family Bibles anymore. But uh, it's on screen, thank God for technology, that will take my version that I'm reading out of, 
New English translation. And uh, we'll read it. Thank you for all the leadership that's been here. These men represented the eldership, but there are so many that have been uh, tremendous in this house. Keep it going. Ministers, deacons, deaconesses, over the schools, and just different aspects of this house. And I so appreciate all, all, all of you. Just look at someone and say, Bishop loves you. Really do, really do. So I said, you're my firstborn, and I uh, appreciate that. Exodus 3. I'm going to set my clock at 40 minutes. If the alarm goes off, just know I got 40 more. <laughs> <clears throat> Exodus 3 and 10. So now go, and I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Thank you for all the men who serve me every Sunday upstairs. Thank you. Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh or that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He replied, surely I will be with you and this will be the sign to you that I have sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you and they will serve God on this mountain. Moses said to God, if I go to the Israelites and tell them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is the name? What should I say to them? Thank you, musicians. God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, you must say to, this, to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, <clears throat> you must say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial from generation to generation. Blessings upon this word in the nombre de Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You might be seated. I want to share today on the enclosure of that. The enclosure of that. Say it with me. The enclosure. The story, quickly. Moses was commissioned to lead Israel, as you know, out of Egypt into the promised land. And that all began when God approached Moses and said, I'm, I'm sending you now to Pharaoh. I'm sending you to my people. And that you have to let my people know that I have sent you. Now, that's probably something like we going to uh, one of the television stations that's Christian oriented and getting on there and saying, folk, God has sent me to the body of Christ to deliver y'all from whatever you need to be delivered from. Well, the first thing, I'm going to be barraged with a bunch of letters and questions and texts, and the station's going to be barraged. Who is that man who thinks he has the right, the power, and the authority to do any of this? Thank you, Elder Rich, for what you've been to me for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who is this that has the power to do this? And to our 70 eight nations around the world who will be hearing this message. I love you, and I pray that this will bless you. That would be absurd of me to do this. And so Moses was concerned about who is he to tell the children of Israel that God has, or I have been the one chosen to, be, to come to you to get you out of Egypt. 
And then Pharaoh would want to know the same, who is that man that's trying to deliver Israel out of Egypt? And so the question came, of course, Lord, okay, I'll do this, but when I, when I do this, uh, who am I going to let them know is behind the idea? Because until this time, God had not revealed himself in this manner to anyone. No one had a revelation of who he was by name. No break. And of course, when he revealed his name over the history of time, that his name was YW. Uh, Y-H-W-H, and they could not pronounce the vows because the vows were sacred, and so only they could use the consonants, and he became known as Yahweh. But the name had not been released until Moses says, who am I going to tell them has sent me? What is your name? And uh, God says, you tell them that I am that I am. Uh And he says, he says it again in the reading of the scripture. Say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Now, this is not a temporary thing, understand, and the last line of scripture that we read, this is my name. This is my name. Forever. Today, Easter 2022, it's still his name. His name is still I am. And when Moses faced Israel and faced Pharaoh, he went with the assurance of the one who was sending him was I am the name of God forever from generation to generation until this generation, his name is still I am. So it doesn't matter what's happening in any generation. He says, you always say I am. And and when you say I am. The whole universe stops and gives obeyance and honor to the name I am. (laughs) Whatever happens, whatever happened by virtue of who he was on that day, Whatever happened by virtue of who he was on that day is still applicable today in the world order. When the world hears, I am, it still knows who is behind it. And the universe lines up when they hear, His name, I am. Remember that. Hmm. Now as we go into the New Testament, the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, John, when they did a depiction of the characterization or characterization characterization of of who Jesus was, Matthew wrote him as, as king and Mark wrote him as servant and Luke 
came at the perspective of him being a man. And John approached Jesus as God. He's the only writer that depicts Jesus as God. As a result, we have the seven uh, depictions of Jesus in the scripture, the seven different characterizations of him. And it, it is important to know that wherever, whenever Jesus said, I am, he was referring to himself as God. What's your name? I am. So when Jesus says, I am, he was letting his hearers know that I'm God. I am. Hmm. And so, I could take you through scriptures, but let me not do that. But the seven depictions, uh, put them up there. The first, he says, I am the bread of life. I am God who feeds, fed the 5,000, etc. He says, I am the light of the world. Implication that the world is in darkness. And the only light that the world can ever see is the God who said, let there be light. That was me. I am the light of the world. And then he says, I am the door. That's interesting uh, about the door because uh, I've never heard it said and stated what happened at the door because Jesus said that no one can enter in. He guards the door to the sheep pen. I am the door. And what Jesus did as depicting himself as the door, he was talking about the sheep that were being protected from harm of, of animal attack and whatnot. So what the, what the shepherd did was actually lay down and sleep in the door so that he would be there in case of any animal that would try to attack his sheep. And he says, I am the door. And then he proceeds from the door to says, oh, you know about that shepherd that's lying at the door to protect the sheep? I am the good shepherd. And if you'll notice the I am's, they are progressive. Bread, light, feeding the world, door, good shepherd. And then he says, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm going to come back to that because really my message centers on that. It's Easter. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am, the re just say those words, I am. How, how, how important that is. What a truth is that. And uh, I am the resurrection and the life. Let me move on to the other two. I am not a way, and none of, the, none of these has a in it. It's all the. In other words, it's exclusivo, it's solo, it, it's the only one. There's no one else, there's no one else that will ever be this. I am. I 
I'm the way, the way, and so any other way, you know you're going to get lost, going to run to a dead end. I am the way, and then I am the truth. In other words, the fulfillment of over the 360 prophecies that are in the scripture, I am. I am the truth of all the prophetic. Eli, it's good to see you. I love you. I've been thinking about you and Debbie. I was going to call you if I didn't see you today. I am the way, truth, life. Interesting that life appears three times. He keeps talking about life. You just tell somebody, keep talking about life. And then, if you keep talking about life, it's because you are being connected to the one who says, I am the true vine, and every branch in me. See, that's the connection between you and life. If you're not connected to him, you will never, never, I don't care how much money you get, who you are, run for Congress, president, run for the universe. You'll never be connected to life until you're connected to the one who says, I am the, I am the true vine. You know, there's a lot of other vines. There are other vines that present themselves as, as being someone that you can con be connected to. But Jesus says, I am the true vine. Hmm. And Jesus was in dispute. Well, he's not in dispute because he doesn't have to dispute because whatever he says is true. But he's on this life thing, on this life issue. Jesus was talking about life to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees worshipped Abraham. Abraham was their connection. Abraham was their true vine. And Jesus says, you know, you're talking about Abraham, and you're talking about the fact that uh, he's your hero, you know, uh, before Abraham was, <laughs> I am. And, and, and the description came from the Pharisees. How can you say that you were before Abraham was? You didn't, you've never seen Abraham. Jesus never said he saw him. What Jesus says that Abraham looked forward to seeing my day. You see, truth is easy to get twisted. And we, tr we, we twist truth all the time. And we're, how many arguments have you had with folk? I didn't say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> and the Pharisees were arguing over something that Jesus didn't say, that Abraham looked forward to see my day. You're not, you're not even 50 years old yet. Why did they use that number 50? Because in the Hebrew nation, the man had completed manhood at the age of 50. You can go back to Leviticus, count the Levites from 25 to 50. 50 was always the, the, the mark where manhood was in its fullness, and they were saying that you're not even 50, you're only in your 30s, 
So how are you going to talk about seeing Abraham? And that's when he says, well, before Abraham was, I am. What, what was he telling them? That I, I was God before Abraham got here. You're looking at me as Jesus. was, But before Abraham was, What do I need to do? Keep it away from my tie. It's okay. All right. Before Abraham, just give me that in case. Before, before Abraham was, I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I am. Come on, say that. I am. <laughs> Ooh, hang in there. It's going to get gooder. You know, when we looked at that, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the light. And I want to take you to I am, which is I am the resurrection. Now, if you'll notice, I am the resurrection came in the center of all the I am's. It was centralized. It was the heart of all the other I am's. Because if that did not happen, none of the other I am's mattered. I am the resurrection. Now what I want you to see, that how could Jesus say, that he is something that has not even happened to prove that he is. How can I say that I'm a scientist if I haven't even begun? If I, if I got a C in general How can I say I'm something and it has never been tested? The opportunity has never come. The occasion has never presented itself. But Jesus, in spite of facing death, never said that I am death. He kept saying three times, completion, I am life. He says for our purposes today, I am the resurrection. How can you say you are the resurrection and you have not died? Come on, come on, come on, Bishop. Get a hold of this because the enemy wants you to miss this altogether. That Jesus did not deal with circumstances. He didn't call himself by situations. He didn't call himself for where he was in life presently. The purpose of his coming was to die. But he never confessed the negative side of his purpose. He continually expressed, I am life, I am life, I am way, I am, I am, I am, I am resurrection. I know I'm going to die, but I am not dead. He never confessed being dead. He said, I must go away. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He didn't say, I'm going to die. He never confessed the process. That would lead to him saying, I am the resurrection. 
We spend so much of our time dealing with the process, dealing with our circumstance, dealing with our situation, rather than dealing with our outcome. Uh, you and I, we need to train ourselves how to speak. Ninety-nine point ninety-nine percent of us don't speak properly. How are you doing? Well, I am not doing the very best, but okay, you're speaking properly or uh, properly. But what are the words coming out of your mouth? A wrong. I mean, what follows your wrong? It doesn't matter about how dignified you present the negative, it's still negative. <laughs> you got to learn how to talk. Because you're talking from your natural mind. And God never honors your natural mind. Let me work on it just a little bit more. Matthew 16, 21. Let me read it real quick. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that he was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed. He would be killed. But on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. He would be killed, but on the third day, he would be raised. He didn't talk about being killed. He talked about being raised. Okay, but Peter took him aside, began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Don't ever tell people what's not going to happen to him. Especially when you're in the kingdom of God. This will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter. You see, in the natural, that would be a consoling thought to know I don't have to go through this. That's what Peter was trying to get him to do to prevent him from going through stuff. And we as parents, sometimes we try to do things to prevent our kids from going through stuff. We try to prevent our family from going through some. I'm in that mode right now. I don't want my kids to suffer certain things. Amen. And so I'm trying everything I can to manipulate and maneuver and blah, 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 so they don't have to go through stuff. Amen. Peter says, Jesus, not you. You're our leader. You're our main man. You're our chief apostle. Oh, no. If you go through that, then I might be next. And I don't want to be next going through what you're talking about. Peter, get behind me, Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're talking about is defiant to my purpose in God. And if I listen to you, a whole world will go to hell. And so Peter was not representing through his speech the kingdom of God. He was representing through his speech the kingdom of darkness. And that's when Jesus looked at him and said, Satan, chief apostle, being used as Satan. Get thee behind me. Jesus said, you are a dangerous trap to me. Lord, have mercy. Can you believe that some of your saved brothers and sisters are death trap to you? They mean you good, but they don't mean you no good. They're trying to save you from something. They're trying to save you from the purpose of God. Trying to save you from the will of God. 
Are you sure, AP, in it? This is your time. What you got to do? Right, right, right. Why are you worried about his time? You got to worry about. Are you sure, Bishop? Yeah, just because you ask it, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm praying and seeking God. I ain't doing too much fasting. But I'm praying and seeking God. <laughs> hey. he, I, shut up. I'm seeking God, this thing's on my heart every day. It didn't just start January. I've been brewing over this for years. Both houses. What's best? And when I feel I get an answer, you're going to tell me to go back to God? And you don't even know what he looked like? You see, when God says something, that becomes his will, his plan, his purpose. Yes, yes. And when you question it, question, hook, question, hook, all question marks are crooked. Exclamation points are straight. So when you question things about the will of God, you're not on God's side. You are a trap Amen. to the plan and purpose of God. And you need to shut your mouth. Yes, sir. Tell somebody, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. You got a mask on it, but shut it. Jesus says, I am the resurrection before he became that. Listen, this, listen. He, be, he says, I am the resurrection before he became that. <laughs> While looking death in the face, he never gave homage or paid homage to death. He realized that to become the resurrection, that death had to be the final straw. See, some things that you want, you can't get it until you get this. You've got to get the negative before the positive will come in your life. You've got to deal with darkness before light comes. You've got to deal with pain and suffering and hard places and tribulation. You got to deal with the nailing of the cross. You got to deal with the spear in your side. You got to deal with everything that affects you on every level. Your crown on your head, your hands, your works, your side, where something ought to be issuing out. What the devil is trying to abort, your feet, he's trying to get you to walk differently. You've got to have all areas of your life Nailed before you can come forth with who you really are. Jesus says, I am the resurrection, but not before Friday, not before Palm Sunday, not before. The week of Palm Sunday, you've got to go through seven days in order to get to the last one. You've got to have some nails. You've got to be speared.
you got to have times that you cry out to the Father because nobody else can help you. You've got to put your spirit in his hand. Your spirit, the very deep of you, you can't commit to father and mother and sister and brother. You've got to commit your spirit to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your innermost being has to be laid into the hands of God. And then there are times that you call him and it looks like He's not even with you. Anybody ever felt like that? That you praying and stuff getting worse? And you get an attitude. What am I praying for if you ain't coming through? You're not doing anything or experiencing anything differently than Jesus did. He said to his father, Why? Have you what? God really hadn't. But that was his feeling at the moment, at the time. Why? And God said, you know, that question is not even worthy of answering. See, some things you pray about, God ignores you. You say, that's dumb. Jesus was not answered when he said, why have you forsaken me? It was like Jesus. God said, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my Lord. But you've got to just hang in there. In there. <laughs> Woo! Tell somebody you got to hang in there. Because... Who you are is not represented in your hanging. Y'all not listening to me, doggone it. Who you are is not represented in your hanging. You're not who you look like you look like. Jesus was hanging as a thief, but he never said, I'm a thief. I deserve this. I've been serving my father all eternity, and he put me up to this doggone it, had me carrying across, and some little black man had to come and help me. <laughs> I'm a Jew. Right. To come and help bail me out. I had to find somebody that ain't worth nothing. But the one we downgrade is the one that makes the scripture. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. He got closer to Jesus than anybody else. Yes, he did. Lord have mercy. Y'all not listening to me. Why y'all come here on Easter? John 18 and 4. From the web translation says, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that were happening to him, went forth and said to them, who are you looking for? They said, I'm looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And all he answered them was, I am. He didn't say, I am Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I am. Look at it. You need a minute because this is not common thinking. They were looking for Jesus of Nazareth. They tried to localize him. They tried to humanize him. They tried to make him a person only. And so when they ask, where is Jesus? Who are you looking for? I'm looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He says, I am. And what did he say? He was saying something to them. I'm beyond who you're looking for. 
something greater than what you're looking for. You see, some of us don't know who we're looking for. We only say what we know, not who he is. Jesus of Nazareth, he said, I am. Can I say it again? What you are going through is not who you are. I got to say it five times because y'all are not getting it. What you're going through is not who you are. What you are going through has nothing to do with who you are. Come on, say it to somebody. What I'm going through is not who I am. Come on, say it again. What I'm going through is not who I am. Whoa! Jesus says, or God says, tell them, I am that I am. The enclosure of that. If you understand the word enclosure, patio enclosure, it's something. <laughs> when you enclose something, it only involves that and no more, no further. When God said, tell them who I am, just say to them, I am that I am. He enclosed that on the front side and the back side. I am, I am. What? That. Don't try to make me anything out of the enclosed. Don't try to make me something who I am not because I am that. And when you confess the that of who he is, then he begins to move in your life, move in your world, move in your situation, move, 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 because when he hears that, And when you put that between hey. I am and I am and nothing else can get in with that. Yeah. I am. I'm going to close. I'm about to close. I am that. I said, Father, forgive me. We're trying to make you who you're not. In my prayer life, trying to make you something you're not. No wonder I've been disappointed. Because you weren't that. No wonder you didn't answer my prayers because I was praying for this and not that. I was trying to twist your arm in my prayer and even in my fasting to get you to be this. And you said, no, I'm enclosed. I am. I am. I am that, the bread of life. I am. I am way, truth, life. I am that. Nothing else. Stop trying to make me something else. I am that, that, that. Find out what the that is. Yes. Good word. I'm getting ready to leave, and I'm getting ready to slap everyone in your big juicy lips.
When, when, Lord help me. When, when you declare that, stop talking about, I don't understand why this happened to me, and I don't understand why I'm going to do this. I don't understand why. Will y'all give me 10 minutes? Keep going. Thank, okay, thank you. This week I've been traveling. I've been to four cities in, in four days and getting ready to go out the country t- tomorrow. And so it was one of those weeks. And uh, I flew into St. Louis a couple of nights ago. And all my regulars who picked me up, Derek and you know, Jeanette, Uber driver who takes care of me like uh, she's the only driver for me. They, they were, Derek was out of town, and it was, I was supposed to get into St. Louis at 12 o'clock. And, and when I got in, plane delays, because you don't know when the planes are going to take off anymore. I was three hours behind, and I got into St. Louis at 3.40 a.m. So I said, don't worry about it, I'll take Uber. So I took Uber, and this young man picked me up. What? I... <laughs> it's 3.40 a.m. I don't have no shotgun, no pistol, no, no, no water gun. I don't have nothing. All I got is high. And he starts talking to, to me. Why did my father die? He was my stepfather. Do you know why, if there's a God, why would he take the one that I love best? And uh, he says, why? I says, well, sir, I had a loved one, and he took her from me as well. You see, but when God creates a thing, he has the right to make the decision about what he creates. Right, 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 right. Yes, he said, I've heard that before. I said, Jesus, what in the world are you doing? I need Mardell to shut up, don't laugh. And we're on 270. Now, 270 is 65 miles an hour. 70 going home, 70, 80, 85. And he's going 50. <laughs> Somebody zoom. See, that's what I'm talking about. What, what are you talking about? People don't pay any attention to the speed limit anymore. That's why the world is so horrible. I hate it. Oh, <laughs> so glad to see you. He says, now, I don't know if you can tell, but I have mental issues. I said, I'm having one too, sir. Hey, man. (laughs) And I am on medication, and I have not taken my meds today. I said, give them to me. I'll take them. <laughs> Are you making me nervous, sir? All right. <laughs> but I had a chance to minister to him, and uh, he got to my driveway, and I said, thank you. Well, let me tell you one more thing.
And my mind is saying, if I don't let him tell me one more thing, what is he going to do if I don't let him? So Luther, you be cool and listen to that one more thing. I said, I want you to know this. I love you. He said, you do? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> he said, no one else has ever told me that before. Jesus, can I leave now? And I said, I love you, and I'll be praying for you. To the God that I talked about, because the God that you believe in, you don't know who he is. Right, 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 right. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to my God. Good job. I grabbed my keys to get in the door. I think I grabbed every key except the one I needed. <laughs> Now, this is your bishop, okay? <laughs> Man of God, all right? Woo. I said, Lord Jesus, where are my keys? I'm putting the key upside down. <laughs> when I finally got in the house, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you did well. You planted a seed. He will never forget it. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. I said, Lord, is that the last seed I have to plant? Okay. <laughs> I won't plant no more seeds, all right? <laughs> but you have a purpose. And God was saying to me, I am that. I didn't like the that. I wanted to get out of Uber and call Lyft. <laughs> but God says, I am that. Yes. And you were portraying who I am yes. to him. Yes. 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 I am that I am. Yes. I, like that. <laughs> I am that I am. Comfort the feeble mind. Yeah. Hey, say it. Do I have to do it? Yeah. If you want me to be that in your life, yeah. you've got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to close. <laughs> I'm going to close. We've got to be careful of how you speak. And what you speak, there's a benediction or a word that we use for benediction that we never even think about. To let, let allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. There are words that we say that God does not accept. And if I'm going to see movement in my life, if I'm going to see the miraculous take place in my life, if I'm going to see my prayers answered, if I want to see mountains come down and doors open and the highways be made straight, if I want to see that, I've got to confess but he accepts. Let the words of my mouth and what I ponder in my heart has to come out of my mouth. My heart, my mouth have to join and connect. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let them be acceptable in thy sight. 
Lord have mercy. Let me give you one last scripture because this is this is crazy. And it's from the book of Joel, the prophet Joel, chapter 3 and 10. When the nation of Israel, God was bringing judgment against them. And they were in war and in fighting. This is what Joel prophesied in his day. Hey, Lord, have mercy. And he said, beat your plowshares in the swords and your pruning hooks into spears. What you've been using to fight, I want you to change their purpose. How you used to use plowshares, now make them swords. How do you used to use your hooks? Now turn them into spears. You've got to change what they were into something else. Oh, y'all not getting it yet. Let the weak. No, 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 I'm going too fast. Let me preach. <laughs> Let the weak say. Now, when God told Moses, he says, this is what you ought to say to them. What do I say? What do I say? You say, I am that I am. And when you say those words, all of heaven is going to rush to bring you out of Egypt and across Jordan or Red Sea and across into the promised land. When you say that, let the weak say, you've got to now line your situation and your circumstance and your speech up with, with who he is. I am that. You got to know who that, what the that is. Let the weak say. Don't say you're weak. All right, all right. Because I am not that. Okay. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, Jesus. Don't say I'm broke. Because I am not that. Right, absolutely. I am prosperity, that I am. I am rich, that I am. I am strong, that I am. Stop confessing where you are, though it's true where you are. But when you keep confessing where you are, you don't give yourself a chance to be anything else. So if you're weak, you don't run around talking about, how you doing today? I'm so, child, I'm so weak. Precious Lord, take my hand. I am tired. I am weak. I am worn. That's some of your favorite songs. When you're weak and you want weakness to move, you've got to change your speech. What used to be is not your plowshares into something else. Your swords, you've got to change. You've got to change what you've been doing, change what you've been saying, change what you've been feeling into something else. Look at somebody and say, you've got to make a change. So the weak, I don't want to lie. You're not lying. You're relining. Okay. 
Because God says you're in a weak state. You don't have a lot of money right now, but broke is not who you are. You don't feel way right today, but sickness is not who you are. And if you want me to help you, say that. Say that. Come on now. I am healing that. I am prosperous that. Don't have a dime in your pocket. Spoke to someone last night. Says, I'm broke. I don't have any money. Any. I says, why don't you believe for a miracle? I, I can't, I don't, there's no miracle I can believe for. I says, believe for a miracle. Believe for a miracle. And, and while they were telling me that they were broke, I was on Zoom sending them some money. <laughs> I don't have your accounts. <laughs> And I kept saying to her while I was in the process on, of blessing, don't say that. Amen, amen. Say what it is that you see yourself being. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She wouldn't do it. But thank God for the mercy of God that he does things for us just to show us who he is and not who you are. Let the weak say, I am strong. It sounds wrong. It sounds contrary because the spirit is fighting against the brain. Your head is saying, I am this. Your spirit is saying, you're not that. And if you want to move that, you got to say who I am, that I am. One last scripture. John, oh no, that's the scripture. No, it's not. John 18 and 6. I want you to look at this. When therefore he said to them, I am. Go ahead, shout yourself right out of that hat. When he said to them, I am. Ooh when you say, I am, look what happens. When Jesus said to them, I am, they went backwards and fell to the ground. When you confess, I am, and put the right words behind it, things began to fall. And everything that you want to see happen, when you say, I am the right word, you call what wasn't into your life to fight off what was. And instead of saying, I am weak, when you say, I am strong, the universe and its strength lines up. Yes. It lines up to come and counteract your weakness. When you say, I am rich, the universe says, did he say I am? Yes. You see, God says, I am that I am, and that's going to be my name forever. And he says it's going to be from generation to generation. And so he wants every believer who believes in his name to be careful what you say after I am. Right. Hey, that's right. That's right. Oh, my, my, my. Because I am wakes God up, so to speak. Yes. Your faith in who he is wakes him up and says, I've got to change his situation because he's confessed me and not he. Yeah. 
And if you want things to fall backwards in your life, I don't know who you are, but are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening? Good to me. If you want to line up, you've got to confess who he is and confess that. And when you confess that, the whole universe rushes in to change what you didn't confess. Are, are y'all hearing me? Yes. Turn your Bibles to the beginning. Let's start all over, okay? <laughs> Get it. When you confess who he is and not what you're going through, yes. the whole universe lines up to change what's going on with you. Jesus said, I, I am, and they, all of his enemies fell backwards. You want your enemies to fall? Confess who he is. And let him know, I believe that you're that and not something else. You've got to enclose the that and make it only that and put the I am before it and the I am after it so that he can move in your life and change what's going on so that you can become who you really are. You got to beat your plowshares. Make them something else. You got to beat your pruning hooks. Change them into something else. Change your speech into something else. Your speech is weak. Your speech is not... Your speech is not getting anything done for you. You've you got to change it into who he is. I am that I am. I'm rich that I am. I'm above and not beneath that I am. I'm a lender and not a borrower that I am. I'm the head and not the tail. That I am. You might be all that. But you have the power to change it if you line up with who he says. That's my name. I'm listening to you. That's right. You're representing me to Pharisees. You're representing me to the enemy. You're representing me to those who don't believe. Change what you're going through to who he is so you can become who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Stand on your feet. Before he rose, before he was the resurrection, before he even died, before he even went through the grave, before he was nailed to the cross, he confessed, I am the resurrection. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. When you read that Bible, it shows you how to live if you would only believe it. If you would only believe it. Stop confessing what you're not. And God is saying, I can't do nothing for you because that's not who I am in you. I am that I am. Give me those roses. I had these for Sister Daisy. This would have been her last Sunday. Am I talking to her? Since she's not here, 
I want to give these to Melvinia. So they were, and they hung together. And they've been in the church for ever since. Melvinia, I just want to see. tell you how special. There's anointing. I am that I am. Before you open your mouth, what you're about to say is it representing that? Because that is enclosed. Nothing is to get in, nothing is to get out, because it's that I am. Take it with you. I'll change your whole speech for what's coming up. Go and do something. You got something you're dealing with. It's rare to find anybody who's not dealing with something. But in your something, you've got to find out how you need to talk. It's important that you know how to talk because in what you put after I am, Is either going to deliver you yes. or you're going to be stuck in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unable to change. Be like Jesus. Hadn't died, but he says, I am the resurrection. Yes. That I am. If you haven't come to the process yet, and you're not at the end of things, <clears throat> but it's okay. You've got to enclose that that and put it between I am. That has to become the meat of your sandwich because whatever God is, you have to confess that in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come on, lift your hands. Thank you for hearing me for these few moments. Yeah. Play it, Benny. Play it. Go ahead and play it. Come on, sing that, sing that. And now, and now, say I am strong. Let the poor say I. Because of what the Lord has done. Sing it again. Oh, and now, let the weak Let the poor say I. One more time. Oh, and I. Let the weak. Yeah. Say it one more. 
of you can have your situations begin to change yeah. this week. This can be the beginning of change in your circumstances and situations this week if you will make this message applicable to your life and to your situation. You're not what you're going through. God wants to show you who you are by your confession of who he is. Watch your speech and say, that I am. And when God hears it, he says, yeah, that's what I am. He's going to call angels. He's going to call the universe to come and rescue you and change your situations immediately. Let the words, come on, lift your hands and tell him. And say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my Redeemer and my Redeemer. So you want to make your words acceptable, acceptable in his sight. Psalm 1914, I believe it is. You want to make what you say acceptable in his sight. Cussing out your neighbor may not be the words he wants to hear. He said, I'm going to let you put up with that neighbor another two years until you learn that I'm not that. Every situation has a that. But you have to speak the one that represents the I am, that I am. You're going to be cognizant of what you're saying this week, I guarantee you. It may not last past Monday afternoon, but you're going to be <laughs> cognizant of what you're saying. But if you put it into practice, put it into practice. I made a point in my life that no matter what, no matter what, I say, God, you, you're perfect. You arranged this for me. Thank you. Can you just honor him one more time in the lifting up your hands? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. From the rising of the sun. Alpha and 
Sing it to him. We Easter bunnies and all the things we do, there might be someone here who wants to have the I am come alive in your life. He's a redeemer. That's who he is. He's a forgiver of sins. That's who he is. Just taking an extra moment. If you want to give your heart to Jesus on this service, that he declares, I am the resurrection, and if you want him to rise in you, so you don't have to experience death anymore. You come now, by the time we finish this song, I want you to be here. <clears throat> Lift your hands. We give you all, we give you, we give you. We give you. 